Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simply Complex Podcast YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about Zero Touch. That's right, Zero Touch. We're running a series of Intro to Zero Touch. If you haven't checked it out, you should. Go head over to simplycomplex.org. Cruise over to the YouTube channel link and check it out. We've done some 101, 102, 103, 104, and we were talking about how to make custom nodes in Dynamo using Zero Touch and C Sharp to make Dynamo and query Dynamo geometry. I thought that today would be fun if we could actually look at Revit geometry. And we're going to start really simple, so let's go ahead and call this episode 201. And we're going to talk about how to actually get information out of a Revit element. So why don't we go ahead and open up our existing solution in Microsoft Visual Studio. And if you're not familiar with the channel, I'd encourage you to check it out and make sure you stop this now and go back and watch episode 101, 102, 103, and 104 so you can get up to speed on what we're doing. Because we're going to jump right in with episode 201 and how to get a Revit category off of a Revit element. So it makes sense at this point to actually make a different class. If you remember, the namespace is going to be actually the first name for the first uh, menu in your zero touch node, and then the class. So under Dynamo Geometry, we made a bunch of Dynamo Geometry uh, creations as well as querying some information. So it makes sense then to actually make a different class. So let's go ahead and find out where that would fall. So let's see here. It's always contained in curly braces. So let's go ahead and go down here and we're going to make a new public class. So we'd say public <coughs> class and let's call it Revit elements. Just like that. We got to close that in curly braces. And then we're going to stick a bunch of goodies in the class itself, including the methods. If you remember, a class is just a collection of methods or routines or subroutines. And what we need to do, if you remember, is we have to make this private, uh, only because it's going to be adding extra information that we would not want to do. So we go ahead and make it private, just like that. And then we are going to ahead and curl the, close that in curly braces. All right. After that, we can then start our method. If this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, just do it anyway. It's good practice. Class, make it private, boom. Um, and this is not going to be returning anything, just that's okay. And then go ahead and curly braces, and then on you go with our method. So we're going to make a public method, just like we've been doing all along. It's going to be public static. And then we're going to actually figure out what are we going to return. In this case, we're going to return a category. So we're going to actually return a category just like that. But you notice nothing is actually showing up. There's a lot of reasons why that's happening right now. Um, what we did not talk about yet is the only thing we've actually put in our using statements is things that would deal with Dynamo geometry. Now that we're going to be actually tapping the Revit database, we need to add more using statements here. So we'll be back in a moment with those using statements. Okay, and we're back. We added some new using statements. The autodesk.revitdb, autodeskrevit.element. They can be found in the Dynamo folder and the Dynamo Revit core, as well as the Dynamo excuse me, as in the Revit application itself. All right, so now when we added these in, do you realize we're actually getting some errors here, which is a good thing to explain. Do you see here now we're actually Visual Studio saying, hey, we have a problem here? And if we scroll over the error, it says that a point is ambiguous, ambiguous reference between Autodesk Revit.db.point and Autodesk.designscript.geometry.point. Okay, the problem here is we only said point and when we were only using design script and dynamo geometry it was clear what point we were talking about now that we're introducing the Revit database a point now becomes ambiguous because they don't know if we're talking about a dynamo point or a Revit point so now from now on we're gonna need to be very careful about our types and how we define them so we can't just say point from now on uh, in this case if we scroll over we can fix this error because this is actually a design script point 
or basically a dynamo point. So do we need to do this to each one? Yes, we do, because in these original cases, we were always talking about dynamo geometry. So same thing with the point. There are, if you can look here, there's a Revit.db, that stands for database line. So there's a Revit line, and there's also a dynamo line. So we're going to need to be a little careful from now on. So I'm going to go ahead and fix all these errors, and I will be right back. Okay, we're back. I fixed all those errors. So now we can be a little more specific about our types, and it'll be really clear what I'm talking about down here. Now, if you see, we got a category. This represents a category. Now, for now, what we want to do, instead of just typing category, uh, we want to be a little bit more specific. So we're going to go ahead and say Autodesk dot. What kind of category are we looking at? And this is a very, very important thing to understand. We actually... Um, are going to okay if we look here if we type category right here and we scroll over it it's going to say autodesk.revit.db.category that is actually not what we want we want revit.elements.category just like so What is Revit Elements category? Revit Elements is basically Dynamo elements that are wrapping Revit elements. I know it sounds a little confusing, but this Revit element is not technically a Revit element. It is a Revit element inside the Dynamo environment. And uh, this will become a little bit more clear later when we talk about wrapping and unwrapping. But for right now, just know that it's a Revit element inside of Dynamo. And that will become a little more clear because that's basically our category. That's what we're sending out. And what we want to name the node, because this is our method. Remember, we first put public static. We put what type is, is going to be sent out as a return or the output port. And then we're going to name the node. So let's go ahead and call it get category like that. And then do you remember we always put it in parentheses and then we're always going to put in what is the input port. But we always have to put in the, the type that is in the input port. Remember, C sharp is always very type specific. So before we put in a variable, we always have to define a type. So in this case, we're doing the same thing. We're doing a Revit element in Dynamo. So that is Revit elements dot, Revit elements dot element. And that's the type because we're going to be bringing in an element in the input port. And then we say element like that. This could be called anything. This is our input port. It could be called element, or it could be called input element. Um, I suppose we could call it input element. So we know it's an input port. Input element. OK, there we go. Now, since it's a method, we have to close it with curly braces. And then this is where we're going to put all of our beautiful code. All right. Now, what we need to do is we need to define a variable. Um, so now think about this, just like we talked about before in episode 101 through 104, is we have to take that input and we need to do something with it. Okay? So this would be similar to getting a midpoint. All we need to do is grab this element that's flying in and turn it into an object in order to do something with it. That's probably the simplest way to understand this. So this is how it works. Ready? We go like this. We say we need to make it into an object. So in order to make it into an object, we need to create a variable. In order to create a variable, we have to define the type of that variable, if you remember that. So the type of that variable is going to be Revit elements dot category because that's the type. And then let's go ahead and name it. We're going to say cat from, or let's use camel script cat from input. And then that will be the name of the variable, just like so. And then we say cat from input. And we say equals equals input element. Input element. OK, now that we've got the element turned into an object, it's sending it right in. All we have to do is press this magic button, period. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. This tells us all the things we can do 
these methods and properties that could be run or queried from the actual Dynamo, uh, Revit element in Dynamo. It's not as many uh, as it could be if we were to unwrap it, and we'll talk about unwrapping in the next segment. But there's a few things we can do. We've got faces, we've got geometry, we got some other goodies in here. One of my favorites in here is this right here, which should be get category. There we go, get category. And under any statement, we end it with a semicolon. And then we notice we're getting an error here because it is getting mad because we put something in the parentheses and it's expecting a return. So all we need to return, we just say return. What do we want to return? That's the big question. The big question is what do we want to return? We want to return the queried inment put element, which is the category. So we want to return this whole thing. So we don't type this out and put it here. I suppose some argue we could, but we already made that into an object, so just return that object. So we could do it here. I know copying and pasting is probably not the best thing to do because we want to go ahead and use the intelligent typing to make sure that it, it is it has recognized it as an object. That is a method. We are closing it with a parentheses. Okay, we are all ready to go. I see no errors here. Now that we are tapping the Revit database, yes, we are tapping the Revit database, we need to actually open up a Revit file. And then we need to place some kind of element in there. And then we can use it. So we are going to build this solution right now. Okay. And then we are going to hop over to Revit. Let's go ahead and say new. And then we're going to say, I don't know, we can pick a template here. Like so. All right, let's go ahead and put something down. I'm more, let's go ahead and put down maybe an architectural wall, like so. Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and fire up Dynamo. Uh, that's Enscape, not Dynamo. Where is Dynamo? Dynamo is under the Manage tab in 2017 and beyond. And we're going to fire up Dynamo. You remember how to load in that zero touch node? You just go ahead and go new. And you say import library. And then we cruise on over to our very special place where we saved it. Let's see here. Intro to zero touch. Let's see here. That should be it. Check the date stamp. Oh, that's what I always do to make sure we're good to go. Okay, we got intro to zero touch is our <coughs> namespace. Now we have Dynamo Geometry. This is what we created in in episodes uh, one through four. Now we're talking about Revit elements, and we have this get category. Let's go ahead and lay that down. That input looks good input and then the output is the category that's great let's see if this thing works first thing we need to do is we have to select something so I'm just gonna do go ahead in here and say select model element I will select that wall that we place down boom looks like it's selecting something when I wire this together it better say wall let's see what happens Okay, moment of truth. I put this over and it is hitting the category walls. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, everyone. Thank you for listening. And I hope this was helpful in order to start to query that Revit database. And next time we will get into how to wrap, unwrap these elements to expose even more goodies within the Revit elements from Dynamo and Zero Touch. Thank you, everyone. And we'll talk to you next time.